Welcome to AP Statistics with Mr. Walton. Today we're going to review Chapter 5. For Part 1, we're going to talk about simulation. I need you guys to remember the five facts right here in front of you. Number 1, we want to use the given percentage to assign numbers. Number 2, we want to state how we are going to assign the digits. Please, for number 3, make sure you explain your process. How are you going to use the random table? How are you going to do whatever it is we're going to do? Number 4, state what you are going to count. That's where I tell you to tabulate. So you're going to tell me I'm going to count the number of blank based on the context of the problem. And for number five, state that you will repeat the process at least 100 times or more and calculate the average of these trials. All right, so let's look at an example problem. Okay. On a nine-seat commuter flight, Air Georgia will sell 12 tickets. If it is known that 90% of individuals who purchase a ticket will show up, design, and carry out a simulation to estimate the probability that the flight will be overbooked. Let's think about it. And here we are with how we're going to assign the digits. I will assign digit 0 to 8 to represent people who, quote-unquote, show up. I will assign digit 9 to represent people who do not show up. That's the first start of our first part, sorry, of our process. The next part is what am I going to do? Take a time, I'm going to write it for you. And here we go. I'll use the random digit table starting at line 141 and select the first 12 single digits. I will then record how many single digits represent passengers showing up. For the next part, we got to talk about tabulating and repeating. As you can see, I will repeat this process 1,000 times. Then I will find the average number of people who show up based on all the trials. Also, as part of this, we talked about carrying out, as you see me highlighting. So be sure that down here, we're going to put a little asterisk, that you are able to use the random digit table. Okay, and then we're going to look at part two of chapter five, and that is probability. Let me please, as you see, reinforce, please review the probability notes to ensure you know the basic principles. Those are the ones that I put on Edmodo that I told you you've seen before. We've gone over them, but just review. Just make sure you feel a, more, a little bit more comfortable. It's going to be better. We've talked about, again, what if we have mutually exclusive or disjoint versus overlapping? Okay, we need to be able to understand the differences between these two. And then we need to understand that if we have overlapping events, that the events are either independent or not independent. Okay, next up we're going to look at notations. Here are some basic notations. So let's think about them. Okay, so we're looking at our notation. We have the probability of car given high school. Notice that's a conditional probability, so we need to think of that in terms of it's the probability of the intersection between car and high school divided by the probability of high school. In our second case, we have the intersection, which means and, and that is just the intersection. You cannot just say, I'm going to multiply these two. You cannot. It's just the intersection. Lastly, we see our union, which is the probability of car U high school, think or, and it's the probability of the car in total, plus the probability of the high school in total, minus the probability of the car intersecting high school. Okay, these are important. We need to go over them. Look at some examples. You have them. You have your quizzes. Lastly, muy importante, complements, showing independence. We can use complements to make our life easier with probability. We can say that the probability of A plus the complement, which means the opposite. So if I say the probability of owning a car, the complement is the probability of not owning a car. It has to be equal to 1. You can use this to, to show that P of A plus P of A complement is equal to 1, and then we might find it easier to solve for the complement and subtract from 1. Big, big, big importance right here, showing independence. There are two ways. 
if the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, then events A and B are independent. Or, if you like conditional probabilities, show that if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, then events A and B are independent. If this is not true, then events A and B are not independent. Next example. Diagrams. Consider drawing a card from a shuffled fair deck of 52 cards. If event A is the card drawn as an ace and event B the card drawn is a heart, can we make a Venn, a tree diagram, or a two-way table? And we should be able to. So try that now. So here are my three diagrams. I know they popped up suddenly. What I'm trying to do is give you guys an opportunity to pause and try these out. You don't have to necessarily do all of them, but hopefully you see what's happening. I guess it moved my probabilities here, so I'm going to let you know that if we did this, we have um, 3 out of 39 here and 36 out of 39 here. But here's the, the representations that we could use. Now, once we have these representations, one of the cool things that we can do is we can come ask ourselves, what is the probability of drawing an ace or a heart? So you're thinking about that. You might want to pause it. And here I go straight away. That is the probability of ace or heart. So that's our union. And so that's the probability of getting an ace plus the probability of getting a heart minus the probability of ace intersect heart. So if we look at any of them, we have this is 1 13th plus this is 1 4th minus there is one ace that is also a heart out of 52 cards. If I combine these, I get 16 out of 52, which reduces to 4, whoops, sorry about that, 4 thirteenths, or if you prefer decimals, that's 0 0.3077 to the nearest 10,000th. All right, so now I figure you want to see a practice FRQ, bum, bum, bum. So here we go. You're looking at this, you're reading it. I'll give you a couple seconds, then we'll come back. Okay. So they took this. We're going to look at this table. Question one. What is the probability that a person chosen at random from this sample will have moderate political views? Notice this is marginal. So if this is marginal, I want the total for moderate here out of my total 255. So I'm talking about the probability of moderate is equal to 75 out of 255. I could reduce that and get 5 seventeenths. Or again, if you prefer, that's 0 0.2941. Either way, it's up to you. If we look at part two, okay, I erase, might use a different color. What is the probability that a person chosen at random from those in the sample who are between the ages of 30 and 44? Boom, boom, boom. Who are they? This is a condition. So, okay, so you need to recognize that. Okay, think about that. So now we have the probability that I am moderate given that I am in the 30 to 44 age group. So that is the probability of moderate intersecting 30 to 44 over the probability of 30 to 44. So what are the totals for 30 to 44? Hopefully you see that's 85. What's the intersection of moderate and 34? Hopefully you see that's 30 which equals 6 seventeenths, or again, 0 0.3529. Last question. Based on your answers in part A and B, are our two things, that is, 30 and 44 year olds and being moderate, political views and age, independent? Why or why not? Since the probability of moderate is not equal to the probability of moderate given 30 to 44. And I can show this because this is 0 
it's not equal to 0.3529 since then the events are not independent. All right, lastly, I thought we'd go over some extra practice multiple choice. So here we go. Number one, read carefully. Remember to pause it. Okay. So this is based on a deeper understanding of probability. If this is the case, what are we expecting to be true if I toss a coin 10,000 times? C. That's my answer. I know you're like, Mr. Walton, you don't pick C. I didn't make these questions up. It's all right. For number two, okay, how do we simulate? If I have 62%, remember, that's the key. That's the percentage. That's what I use to simulate. So which one of these is exactly 62%? Bingo. It's D. Okay. Looking at number three, make sure you read carefully. Okay. All I really care is what percent have more than two cars. So it's just these three probabilities, which makes it again C. All right. Remember, you can pause at any time so that you can try these before I do. Number four. Ah, I want two digits. Uh, my percentage is 0.98. So I'm going to divide this up into two digit numbers. Please. Two digit numbers, right? Okay. And I need 10 of them. And I need to know how many yeses I have. So I have yes, 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 no, yes. One no, so nine yeses. The answer is B. There we go. Here we go. Continuing onward. Ah, take a moment. Get your totals. I'm going to write them instantaneous instantaneously that's what I was meaning to say and here we go if I have these totals then doesn't it make it easier what's the probability a student has a GPA under 2.0 come down that's my total column right here 255 so that's 255 out of a thousand B boom six what is the probability a student has a GPA under 2.0 or has skipped too many classes. So that means we need to say the probability of less than 2.0 plus the probability of many minus the probability of less than 2.0 intersects many. Okay? If I do that, I should see that it's 0.255. Whoops, sorry. That's an ugly 5. 0.255 plus 0 0.110 minus 0.08. And then, if I calculate correctly, that is C. All right. Last one using this. It says, what is the probability that a student has a GPA under 2.8 given he or she has skipped many classes? So that means out of my total for many classes, what do I have? I have 110 of the many that skipped. How many of them have a GPA under 2.0? 80. 80 divided by 110 equals E. And there we go. We're going to have to speed up a little bit. We're looking at 8, 9, and 10. And here we go. Please read carefully. Which of these is true? A is false. B is false. C is false. D is false. E is true. So pick it. It's the only one. Okay. Next one up, choosing at random an American adult. We're reading carefully. Since the intersection is 0.11, I have to say 0.52 plus 0.25 minus 0.11. B is my answer. And the last one is I'm drawing cards. I want a face card every time. 12 times 52, but then I lose a card. I don't put it back in. Times 11 over 51 times 10 over 50 equals 0.00995, which is 0.00. I'm sorry. Not zero zero, but zero one, which is C. I hope this has helped. If you have any further questions, come by and see me.